Hello everyone. Hello Fishbowl. Thank you for joining us today. You guys probably already know this intro if you've heard our past talks, but my name is Samantha Lagiri. I'm the marketing manager at the career coaching company Woken, and I'm here with today's guest, Rachel Serwitz, who is the founder, CEO, and career coach at Woken. So we're excited that this is our 10th time speaking on Fishbowl. Whoa, double digits. <laughs> But uh, you can follow us by clicking our profiles to be notified of future conversations. But today we are kicking off our second session in our new career living room series, which focuses on different career topics so that you can get a holistic set of career guidance to ensure you can succeed. So in this session, we'll review how to stay accountable towards your career goals and give you some creative tips on how to overcome uh, pitfalls, keep track of your progress, find structure and more. So we'll present and interview Rachel for about 40 minutes and then leave it open to the audience for Q&A for about 20 minutes towards the end. So again, we welcome participation from you guys, either um, one by raising your hand to join the stage. You should see a button in the bottom right corner um, and we'll accept it. But side note, make sure your microphone is on and two, um, direct messages to Rachel so we can keep your name anonymous while still answering your question. Okay, sorry, that was a mouthful. <laughs> but now we're going to hear a quick introduction into Rachel's background. So Rachel, take it away. Awesome. Um, thanks to everyone for being here. So super quickly, uh, I am from New York. I started out in the financial services world. I was at Goldman Sachs and then Bridgewater. I was in operations and then HR. On the side of my job, I was career coaching uh, by way of referral, uh, friends and friends of friends, and after five years and hundreds of conversations, I saw a lot of patterns and the challenges that job seekers were facing. After that, I got coaching training through NYU and got certified through the International Coach Federation. I also did a tech MBA at NYU Stern, and I've done coaching through the Flatiron School, WeWork, Project Activate, Slate, and a few other organizations, and I've been building my own company for now almost six years. So. Again, you know, seeing hundreds of different professionals and we help with a wide variety of career goals, challenges, you name it. We've seen uh, such an array of situations, commonalities, you name it. Uh, we've really seen it all. So we're here to make sure that you can be informed and supported with every step that you take. And today we're going to talk about accountability because it's a uh, interesting component where you know look if we need to see results we need to put it in a little time so we're going to talk about how to make this creative and effective and maybe even a little fun to work on your career um and how to how to stay on top of it without it having to feel so overwhelming so we're going to dive in and of course if you have questions on my path i'm happy to circle back but just wanted to uh, give you guys a super quick intro to who i am love it okay so without further ado let's get into it um, so first off, what is accountability and why is it important? Yes. So, you know, it's funny. I sort of interpret accountability in a lot of different ways. I think the quickest definition is, are you putting in the amount of time that you want to be putting in? So your productivity level and your pace is totally your choice. But if you're like, I want to be doing more and I'm not, right, that would be sort of a lack of accountability. Or maybe you're overachieving on your goals and you're being extra driven and committed and accountable. Uh, the other ways that I personally interpret accountability has to also do with your sort of like, uh, let's call it systems to some extent, right? Uh, what tools are you using? You know, who's around you? Where are you doing the work? It's sort of the who, what, when, why, and where of, you know, staying organized, structuring your time, balancing your time sort of the operations behind it, right? Because your job search, you know, you could think about it like any other work project. You know, you want to think about how you're showing up, where is your time going, how are you prioritizing, how are you balancing across different activities, how are you staying on track, you know, how are you measuring, pivoting, and adjusting, right? It's like any sort of organizational system of, of staying organized, structuring, um, and, and thinking about what tools are helping you to do that to sort of operate your system. Um, but in a nutshell, it's, it is really the productivity first and foremost, but there's just so many adjacencies of what's going to help you stay on track, what's going to help drive that productivity. Of course, why is it important? Well, we're not going to achieve our goals if we're not putting in the time. Now, of course, we can't only put in the time. We have to think about are we doing the right things? But, um, you know, look, if we want to achieve something and we're just simply avoiding it or procrastinating it, 
you know, we know that's not going to, you know, a, a new job may not fall from the sky. You know, now might it be lucky if someone comes your way? Absolutely. But if you want to put yourself out there, there's a little bit of time and effort involved. Now, again, you can be creative and a little bit of time could go a very long way if you know the right things to do. Um, but it's important because to me, there's really three keys to achieving any goal, which is your mindset, your accountability, and your practical strategies. So the mindset we talked about actually two weeks ago, and we can uh, grab that recording link for you guys. And today's all about the accountability. And then, of course, in our upcoming series, we'll dive deeper into, you know, the strategies and, and how you should go about the process. But staying organized, staying on track, putting in the time is a key ingredient to achieving whatever goal it is that you're working towards. 100% agree. So now, what areas do you commonly see people struggle with it? Yes. Um, let's see. Okay, so first and foremost, if you're, like, not working, right, and you're job searching, or even if you are working and doing this on this side of your job, I find that people are not always, you know, so structured with their time. And it's kind of like how do you balance the different activities that you're going to do. And the reason I say that is because if you don't plan – the routine of like how you're going to go about something, it's way too easy to fall into the easy things. For example, you may apply online constantly, but is that really going to be what's helping you move to the next level of your job search? And so you want to proactively protect time and look at like what are the different things that's going into your week and how are you actually approaching it? So structuring your time, and I like to visualize my time, you know, whether it's a digital calendar or a written calendar. So structuring, balancing, prioritizing the different activities on your plate is one thing. I also see, you know, setting goals, right? You want to first understand where should my time be going and then determine, like, do you want to have a volume-based goal or do you want to have a time-based goal? Like, maybe you want to spend 30 minutes a week or maybe you want to do one networking call a week. So is it quantitative in the sense of, you know, the, the amount or the time? Um, also, other people are kind of either deadline-based or routine-based, right? So do you want to say maybe every Monday night I'm going to do a little job stuff or maybe you want to say, okay, by Sunday I'm going to do A, B, and C, right? So deadlines or routines. Um, but really you're, you're looking at, you know, what are my goals and am I meeting those, right? So goal setting versus, you know, how am I doing against it? Um, you know, I see a lot of people who, uh, you know, either should consider or do consider help getting help from people. So mentors, co-working groups, coaches, peers, right? How can you use other people around you to help you? Um, there's also other forms of, support, whether it's just resources informationally, you want guidance to know what to be doing, how much to be doing it, when to be doing it, things like that. You don't want to just put in the time. You want to make sure you're being strategic with that time. Um, and of course, we talked about tools, right? So calendar, to-do list, reminders, what are the ways that you're going to stay organized and know what to do and when to do it? Um, I also see people sometimes struggle with the ability to pivot, right? So you want to stay organized, but you also want to stay somewhat like, I don't want to say loose, but in the sense of like measuring, you know, if you're organized, you can easily measure what are you doing and how is it going and when should I adjust? It's like any other experiment at work, right? If you're in a startup or if you're doing marketing or if you're in the world of product management, how do you pivot on a regular basis? You get data, you measure how it's going and you pivot. So job search should be the same way. And making sure, you know, that you're you're iterating with how things are going. You can also iterate with just your own accountability system. So, um, you know, what's working, what's not, right? If you're not using your calendar, maybe you try a different tool. So how is your own accountability system working and how do you iterate with that? Um, and then the last piece is the mindset, right? Like, if someone is not interested in the path that they're pursuing, if they're not motivated, right? Like there's sometimes a deeper reason if we're procrastinating, it could be fear, it could be stress, it could be lack of certainty around your career path, your career direction. I mean, there's any number of conscious or subconscious hesitations. I mean, sometimes, for example, networking, people are nervous to do that. So, you know, how do we um, make sure you feel comfortable you know, there could be an effective strategy that you know you need to do, but if you don't really enjoy doing that, are you going to avoid it? So how do you balance, like, here's what I need to do and here's how I feel. Make sure that those feelings become conscious. If it's subconscious, you're not bringing it to the surface. So the deeper mindset of, you know, is there something getting in your way? You know, maybe you're avoiding putting in the time and why 
why is that? And just know that any, even if you're avoiding something, that's still okay to say to yourself, let me just understand that feeling because whatever that feeling is, it's going to be useful as a tool for you and an opportunity to move you forward. Um, so don't avoid, you know, like, like if you're procrastinating, I, I always say just lean into a little like journaling or meditation or even chatting with a mentor, peer, coach, somebody, because simply understanding kind of what's going on for you is actually productivity in and of itself. So even if you need to spend time in the mindset work before you can dive into the other stuff like networking or whatever, that's still productive. So meet yourself where you're at. Um, but the mindset can be a really kind of uh, tricky one, of course, but but important one to not ignore. It's, you know, I, I picture like a pyramid, right? So the mindset is the base and then accountability is on top of that. So the mindset sort of has to be there in the sense of like being somewhat ready uh, to be able to start putting in the time. So if you're really feeling that avoidance or hesitation or procrastination, come back to the mindset work, get yourself feeling more comfortable, and then you could revisit sort of more of that practical work. I love it. And we covered so much there. So don't worry if you guys didn't get all of it, we're going to go um, more in detail into it too. But um, first, let's go over how to identify if you are struggling and need help with accountability in the first place. So how do you recognize that? Yeah, you know what, this is kind of funny, because accountability is one of the clearest things to notice. Like, if you're not putting in the time, you're going to know you're not putting in the time. Now, if you try to follow some to-do list or routine or reminders, you know, I've tried a lot of different accountability systems, and you may try something. If it doesn't actually help keep you on track, that's not the accountability system for you. Try something different, right? I love calendars. Maybe not everyone loves a calendar, right? So try something different. But the accountability system and tools that you use it either works to keep you on track and you put in the time or it's not working, in which case you try something different. So usually accountability is pretty clear if your system's working for you. Um, and then there's a difference between am I putting in the time but not seeing the results I want, in which case I have to adjust my practical efforts and how I'm approaching things. So those are two different things. But if you're not putting in the time, it's usually either like your you know, how you're going about the accountability, whether it's when, where, how, why, you know, how you're going about your routine, your tools, what's keeping you on track, or maybe there's a deeper mindset struggle coming up for you. But usually it's pretty obvious to recognize, like, am I seeing the productivity I want? Yes or no, right? So that you can usually recognize. And then it's just a matter of diagnosing, like, why is that and what's going on for me, right? Right. Thanks for that. Um, okay, so now we'll dive into some creative tips to stay accountable to your career goals. So, Rachel, first question for you, how do you structure your time? Yes. Um, well, first and foremost, you know, it depends on your goal. And also, of course, it depends on your pace, right? So if someone's working or not working, if somebody's pursuing career clarity or pursuing a new job or pursuing upskilling or improving branding, I mean, it really depends what you're working on, how much time you have and how fast you wanna go. All of that is gonna determine your own strategy and your own roadmap and how you approach this next phase of your career. Um, you know, depending on your goal, it's also gonna determine like what efforts you actually do. Um, but you can actually just simply decide, right? How much time do I wanna put into this thing? Um, you know, depending on whatever it is you are working on, you also wanna ask yourself, how do I break down that time? So for example, in job search, I usually recommend, and again, you could be putting in an hour or 10 hours a week or more on job search. It just is totally up to you. But you want to ask yourself, how do I break that down? So usually I, um, I recommend at least 50% of time on networking and maybe 10 to 20% on job applications. So depending on, again, whatever goal you're working towards, then you want to ask yourself, do I understand how to properly break down the time spend, how to balance my time across the different activities? Now, it also depends on your goal because, for example, job search is a little bit of multitasking, whereas something like pursuing a career uh, clarity or career exploration, usually I approach that in like a one step at a time process. So again, totally depending on your goal, uh, in terms of, you know, how you're going to break down your time and, and your approach. I love to time block on a calendar. Make it visual, right? Your time is your most precious resource. So in the span of a day, you don't have to plan out every single minute. 
But even if you spend an hour on job search and you break it down, what's going to go into that hour and you break it down into 15 minute increments, even the act of just doing that is allowing you to be intentional and ask yourself, what makes the most sense? What do I need? And what should I be doing? When and how much time should I spend? Um, You can also use timers. So a timer is a great way to break something down, make it feel a little bit more manageable. Maybe you say to yourself, I only have five or 10 minutes. Maybe in those five or 10 minutes, I could search on LinkedIn and find a good connection who I want to network with, right? That could be done in a few minutes. So timers can help if you want to start small. Timers can also help if you feel like, you know what? I don't want to be searching this job board for more than 20 minutes, right? So it could be a maximum. It could be minimums. But use a timer as your friend, um, you know, based on what you think makes sense. Uh, and, and routines, right? Like you, you want to show up to this, like any other commitment, right? Um, we put so much time into like our jobs, right? Why not put time into like, to me, this is the best, most important kind of work. You're the CEO of your career. You're the CEO of your job search, right? Imagine how much time and effort you put into these other jobs and employers, right? So this is for you about you. And so, yes, it may feel like work, but if you make it like any other commitment, you could say, you know what? 30 minutes once a week, I'm going to think about my career and figure out what else I need to move myself forward. Um, You know, especially if you're working, we just put so much time into that job. So, you know, again, think about it like any other commitment. You commit to your hobbies, you commit to friends and family, you commit to working out, you commit to all these other things. So it's just a thing you can balance into your plate. Um, And of course, you could toggle that up or down depending on where you're at, you know, in, in your career. Love that. Lots of great tips there. Okay. Next question. Uh, How should someone set goals? Yes. So goal setting, so important, right? Um, So first and foremost, you will need to understand the right goals. I think a big part of this is sometimes people go about career processes like totally on their own. You know, you may or may not want to work with like a coach, but you can still leverage mentors, peers, or even online resources. People forget that like, you're not just doing the job search. You can actually go to resources and actually learn how should I job search? That's a part of job search is learning how to job search, right? Or the same thing could be said for pursuing career clarity or whatever you're working towards. You wanna understand what to do, how to do it, and then you can set the right goals first and foremost. So for example, I wouldn't want anybody to be doing 100 job applications and zero networking if you're in the job search. So you need to understand that balance of what makes sense And then I like to start bite size, right? Especially if you're stuck. Just ask yourself, like, literally what's feasible in five minutes? Maybe in five minutes, you can write an email to a mentor and see if they can meet with you. Or maybe in five or ten minutes, you can look up some job seeker communities that may have some resources for you, right? Or maybe in five or ten minutes, you look on LinkedIn for somebody to network with who's in a target company that you're looking to learn more about, right? So break it down into baby chunks. Um, and you'll notice once you get started with five or 10 minutes, you're going to naturally be ready to say, okay, what can I do in 15 or 20 minutes? Right. Um, so, so start really small. Don't start with like the big goal, like start, you know, baby size and then, you know, be realistic, be honest with yourself. Um, you don't need to be a hero. Like if you're not a morning person, you don't need to like start, you know, pretend like saying, I'm going to wake up at the crack of dawn and, you know, start doing this. Like, If you're tired in the evenings after work, you don't have to do it in the evenings. You know, I love a good, you know, weekend routine. I know it's hard on the weekends because you're trying to relax. But on a Saturday or Sunday, maybe you have a little energy and you can make it a little fun and you could go to a coffee shop and make it enjoyable for you to put in the time to pursue your professional interests, even in 30 minutes out of, you know, your your week. Um, You know, I, I like to think about like a min and max, right? So in a busy week, What's the bare minimum amount of time? Or it could also be like a quantitative, like maybe you want one networking call a week or whatever it may be. So what's a min and a max? In a busy week, what's the minimum you want to get done? In a free week, what's the most that would be like a great productive week, right? So that's a range. And usually you're probably going to fall in between the range, but it helps you create some reasonable boundaries. And then every single week, you can actually update that or adjust it. Um, and get more specific with what you want to go into that week specifically. And, you know, give some rewards, like make it enjoyable. Like 
I love a good coffee shop because like they're literally in the business of having like an inspiring vibe around you and like put on some great music in your earphones and you know um, maybe you go with a friend um, and you get yourself your favorite coffee or tea like this is about like the professional impact that you actually choose that you want to have things you want to learn about things that are intriguing to you pushing yourself closer to things you really want to pursue so make it fun for yourself right whether it's the experience or maybe you have a little reward at the end right maybe you know you you get this stuff done and and what's a what's a reward you can give yourself um so those are just some of the ways of setting goals and of course you can always adjust uh, depending on how it's going. So if something's really working, you do more of it. If something's not working, you do less of it. So you can always come back and reset those goals. Um, or for example, if you notice you set a goal and you're not staying on track, what can you do differently, right? Why are you not staying on track? So accountability can actually tell you a lot about like, not just what you're doing, but what you're not doing and why and how you're doing, right? It can really give you clues into where you need support, where you need help, where you need guidance, right? And where you can improve. Love that. And I really like the rewards one too. I think there's like a lot of uh, psychology behind that with positive conditioning. So science yep. definitely says it works, guys. <laughs> okay. So now next question. Um, how do you ensure you meet your goal? Um, yes, great. So if you're not meeting your goal, right, or if you're striving to meet your goal, you just need to, of course, you're going to set that goal, you're going to do your best to like break it down. So I think that's another big thing. Like people say, okay, I got a network. Okay, but what goes into that? So you need to research the right connections and understand where and how and where to brainstorm people, where to research people, where to find introductions. Maybe you just jot down a brain dump of different people. Maybe you use LinkedIn for research. Then you need to phrase your outreach messaging. Maybe you have somebody review how your messaging looks and sounds. Maybe you prepare for the networking call. Then you host the call. Then you follow up from the call. So there's several steps. So break it down because I think a lot of people say, I need to do this big thing. You know, one of the best uh, quotes I ever heard from someone who was actually supporting me way back when, they said, you know, if you see it as a mountain, you're never going to want to get to the top. But if you see it as one step in front of the other, eventually you will make such progress towards the top, right, periodically. I mean, we think about I've been building now this business for almost six years with you know, Monday through Friday only, by the way, I still have work-life balance, but imagine what years can do of consistent effort. Now, of course, you don't have to job search for years, but don't see it as a big mountain. See it as what could happen if I spent five or 10 minutes a day, two or three days a week. You'd be surprised what you can do if you get creative and scrappy and break it down into bite-sized chunks. You can actually be a lot more productive than you think. So if you're seeing it as this big lofty thing, break it down. Um, and then just notice, like, what isn't getting done and why. You might not be sure how to approach something. Like, networking can be scary. Like, do you need support? Do you need guidance? Do you need tips? Do you need uh, templates? Do you need frameworks? Do you need, you know, someone to look at your email? Like, sometimes I'll encourage clients, just write the email, send it to me. If you're not sure how to, like, if it's ready to get sent to someone else, like, say you're not ready to send it to your actual contact, Send it to a mentor, a peer, or a friend. To, you know, how can you get, you know, maybe just drafting the email and not sending it to anyone. You know, take baby strides forward to really break it down and either try to draft it, right, in a way that's behind the scenes or try to get some help with, you know, figuring out what's holding you back. Um, and sometimes this stuff is subconscious. So just if you notice a blocker in any way, uh, just journal on it. Like genuinely, like be in that mode of just understanding what's going on. Um, and, and why, you know, why, why you may be struggling with, with getting it done. Um, you know, you really want to think about, again, the who, what, where, when, why, and just keep, you know, accountability is interesting because the mindset work needs a little, you know, love and it needs a little conversation to support you with your mindset. But if it's simply the routine that's getting in your way, every single week, if you ask yourself, was I accountable? Yes or no. And if not, how do you just adjust one small thing each week. So when I first started my business, literally, I remember day one, and it was like, what am I supposed to be doing, right? So from the get go, you know, asking myself, how am I going to time block? How am I going to plan my week? What should I be doing, right? And just allowing yourself to get creative. So eventually, I started using my calendar. And I've been using time blocking on my calendar now for 
six years. And so once you get your routine down with what tools you're going to use and what's going to keep you on track, then you're not going to be worried about your organizational system. You're just going to be worried about my strategies, my tactics, my efforts, my results, and all of the good stuff and the meaty stuff and the work and the results, right? That's what you want to focus on. So keep iterating in your routine until it just works because that's what you want from an accountability system. It supports you. It helps you stay organized. It keeps you on track. But it allows you to free up your mind to figure out, like, what should I even be spending time on, right? I love that. And especially I really like uh, the analogy that your mentor gave you about the mountain. I think I'll, I'll start thinking of things that way, too. Um, but, yeah, speaking of support systems, how does leaning on uh, support systems and getting support help drive accountability? Yes. I mean, look, we don't have to go about anything really in life by ourselves. I mean, today we're such a world of community. Like, why not have another person involved? It could be a coach, a peer, a mentor, a therapist. It could be co-working. I love Focusmate. It's such a wonderful tool. Um, so have another person. You could even explore just like go to a coffee shop, go to a library, like literally having strangers around you, even if you're not talking to them that's motivating, right? So what's your environment? Who's around you, whether you're directly working with them or just like periphery, like you're getting some vibes of energy from being around people. Um, but having other people there is going to drive your momentum and motivation, but you need to decide, you know, do I need to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody where I really need the, the coaching and the guidance and, and whatnot? Or do I need peers around me for moral support? Or, you know, what do I need from other people? But don't feel like you need to be on your own with career stuff, really, ever. There's truly never a need because the right people, there's always somebody willing to help in one way, shape, or form. Um, and you can give and take, right? You can help each other. Um, you can get give and get tips, share notes, share resources, share introductions. Um, you know, and, and the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, family and friends, it's, it's a personal support system, but sometimes they may or may not help you from a career perspective. So I would just be a little careful there because sometimes we treat each other like we are each other's career coaches when that may or may not actually be supportive to you. So just decide who do you want to go to for career support and who do you not want to go to for career support, right? So boundaries, right? You don't have to go to certain people if they're not going to serve you and they're not going to help you. Um, so it's, it's who do you want support from and who do you not want support from? And the same goes, by the way, on LinkedIn. We're sometimes comparing ourselves to people like, who can you unfollow, right? Only leverage other people if, they're, if, they, if they give you inspiration or information. If they're not doing that, you know, just be wary because sometimes our subconscious mind, we start following people and then it's like, is this actually serving me, right? So, but lean on others. You don't have to be alone. I think a lot of people go about job search and they're just like trying things guessing, not seeing results they want, and then not getting help and not getting support. And it's like, you know, you're not expected to know how to job search. Like, no one really taught anyone how to do that. So find the help. Like, you don't have to be on your own getting frustrated because you're guessing and not seeing the results you want, right? So find, find the support out there. It's there. I love it. Inspiration or information. <laughs> it's like locked in my brain now. Okay, uh, so next up, you mentioned using tools. So what kind of tools do you mean and how do they help? Yeah. So again, you got to find what works for you. Some people like a physical, you know, journal or a physical piece of paper, a physical calendar. I, you know, use a, a Google calendar, but really any visual way to time block, right? Because there's a difference between goals and there's a difference between where is my time going? And you really want to proactively protect the time. Otherwise, it's way too easy to just do the easy things that may not actually help you, right? So are you going to be on job applications constantly on those online job boards, or are you going to network? If you determine that you want to be networking throughout the week, protecting that time is going to facilitate for you to do it. It may take a little more effort or energy, but protect that time to make sure you are prioritizing the way you need to be prioritizing, right? The the time blocking is different than a to-do list, right? The other thing to think about is routines, right? I love a good recurring weekly calendar invite, right? But just be wary. Sometimes if it's recurring, it's also easy to ignore it. So you just want to see what's uh, 
what's going to work for me, right? Whether it's recurring, whether I plan every single day, whether I plan it on Sundays for the whole week, just iterate with different tools for yourself um, and see what works. Peer groups, co-working groups, um, you know, any, any kind of tool, whether it's really people or digital or physical tools, um, even your physical environment, by the way, like, you know, I've had people where it's like, I need to clean my desk. I need to get a new monitor. I need to get a new desk chair. I've been working from my couch. I've been working from my bed. I need to sit near natural light. I need a standing desk. Like, you don't need to go buy a million things. But ask yourself, are you set up in a way that you can focus? I've had people where, you know, even a second monitor, um, again, you don't have to, like, go do expensive things. But the reason I say this is because, Having a calendar on one screen and having your actual work on another is a great way to make sure you're staying on your plan. Because when you just have your internet browser windows open, it's like, what's your approach? Like you're just in the middle of the job search, but there's like your strategy and then there's the work, right? So those could be like two windows that are up on a screen, or of course it could be one monitor, but you have two things side by side, right? So really thinking about tools you're using, how you're using it, how you're set up, even your physical, and then, of course, within the digital environment and, and your space. Um, there's so many ways to think about this, but just asking yourself what tools are working for me or not and just keep iterating until it's keeping you on track. Love it. And, yeah, there's, like, so many online tools that's, so like, if one doesn't work, you can just hop to another one. So I love that. It's, like, so accessible now. Okay, so now what about getting the right guidance on how to spend your time? Yes. Um, so this is important important, right? We've talked about like, you don't need to be alone in this. Um, if you're guessing and, you know, trying things, but not seeing results, you know, the, 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 the answer is to seek support one way, one way or another. Um, so just remember, it's not just about putting in the time. It's about getting the guidance on what to be doing and how to pivot. And like, you may need to just tell someone like, look, here's what I've been doing. Here's what I've been seeing. And like, you know, someone like myself, I can sort of diagnose like, okay, if you're seeing A, B, and C, this is what this means. This is what we need to adjust. Because if you're talking about job search, job search is a funnel where, you know, if you're not getting first round interviews, we got to get your foot in the door. If you're getting interviews but no offers, we may need to do more mock interview prep. So it really depends on what you're doing, what you're seeing, and how and where you need to adjust accordingly. Um, you know, with career exploration, you may say, I'm trying to learn. I'm doing networking calls, but I'm not getting what I want out of those calls. Okay, well, maybe we don't know the right questions to ask. So, you know, get help from someone who can steer you in that right direction, right? Because, um, you don't, again, you don't need to guess, right? Find someone who can guide you in terms of here's your goal. What should you be doing to efficiently and effectively meet that goal, right? You don't need to, like, sort of force yourself to have those answers, right? Again, if no one taught you, where can we go learn from, from other people? people uh to to make sure you know what to be doing properly love it okay so we're getting close to the 40 minute mark but i think we have time for another question so um next one is you said to expand on embracing the iterative and experimental nature of it so what exactly did you mean by that yeah so what i mean is that you know again we've sort of touched on this a little bit right but like if something's not working and if you're not putting in the time change it, try anything. But the beauty is be realistic with yourself. So you're not just trying anything. You're basically asking yourself, okay, given what I know about myself, given what tools I like to use, given what time of day I have energy, given how I know I like to work, what tweak can I make to my system that I genuinely think will help me? If you keep iterating like once a week over the span of a few weeks, by the time, like, you will eventually just come up with a system that works. You want to get to a point where you're like, I'm literally just putting in the time that I would expect or hope to be putting in. And if you're not yet there, keep tweaking the, the accountability system until you get to that point. And, you know, the other way you could look at this is, you know, you might be job searching right now, but guess what? Eventually you may say, I want to upskill or I want to work on my brand or I want to build my network or I want to clarify my path or I want to get a promotion. There's any number of career goals you may work on. So if you allocate 30 minutes a week, your goals and what you're working on may change over the course of time. But getting in a happy rhythm of like, I spend 30 minutes a week to just think about my career, that can never hurt you. And then it's just a matter of like, what am I working on that week, right? So, so that's another way to look at it instead of just, trying to say, oh, right now I'm working towards this one thing. You may say, you know what, from a grand scheme of things, 
I want to make sure I'm always putting in a little bit of time. That's one way of doing it. Other people prefer to say, all right, here's my short-term goal. I'm going to be driven to meet that goal, right? But just figuring out what works for you and keep iterating until, you know, you, you feel like you're in that rhythm that, that simply just feels doable for you. You can find a reasonable balance. You don't have to go overboard. Um, you know, what would be a happy, productive amount for you? And just start small. You can always increase it, right? But keep iterating in terms of the when, where, who, what, why, right? Who's around you? What's your routine? What's your system? What are your tools? And, you know, before you know it, you'll just be staying on track. Love it. Okay, let's squeeze in one last question. So how does your mindset come into play? Yes. Um, you know, this is, this is huge, right? Because the mindset, it could be so many different things, right? You need to ask yourself, like, what is my goal and why do I care about this, right? Like, ideally, you're looking into work that interests you, right? So, like, what impact do you want to have? Are you interested in certain innovations or certain industries or certain problems you want to solve? Like, why do you care about working on those things? Like, you know, people always tell me I talk fast and loud. I have a blog all about it, right? Because I care so deeply about this work and I, I could tell you why. Um, but, you know, look, you don't need to be in love with a certain career. But ideally, you find, look, you know, this is the thing people forget, right? A job is a real place in this world. There's so many jobs for so many purposes, but we all have some level of an impact. So if you're not aligned with your current work, go explore and learn to figure out what roles, what teams, what companies, what industries are actually like interesting to you, right? So again, this doesn't have to be you jumping over the moon so happy and in love and it's, there's no dream career, there's no perfect job, but like, should you have a level of interest? Absolutely, you can understand and care about the impact that you're having because every job is solving a problem for someone. So it's like, where do you want to be? And every step, every new job you get can be an incremental step forward closer to your interests. So, you know, where do you want to grow? And the networking can be such a great opportunity to learn and uncover, uh, you know, what's out there. Um, and, and so if you're job searching, like, you can give yourself a little research time to look into things, to learn about companies and products and innovations and figure out, like, who do I want to talk to? I always say networking and interviews are a mirror into the work, right? And so these conversations are about real problems that you would be solving on the job. So don't just like check the box and just say, oh, I need to go do this interview really well. It's like, what interview do you even want to be in? What conversation do you even want to have, right? Um, you know, the mindset, you know, we, we talked about making it fun. You know, again, you may not be jumping for joy, but make it fun, right? Like, remember, this is for you. This is about you. Like, make it enjoyable. Go to that coffee shop. Get a friend. Do it together. Like, this is the best, most important kind of work, which is for you, about you, for the betterment of, like, your progress, your potential, your impact, right? And so no one else is going to do it for you, right? And so try to make it a little enjoyable. And hopefully, you know, if you're enjoying the networking calls, right, it goes hand in hand. Do I know what work interests me? Let me go find the people doing interesting things. And that way the process is not, like, so awful, right? You should have some level of interest. So, you know, make the process a little fun. Um, and if you're really sort of hating it, you know, use that as a signal to say, how do I look into some things that are a little more interesting to me? Perfect. Okay. And right on time too, as we hit the 40 minute mark. Um, so this is just a snippet of what Rachel and Wilkin can help you with. Um, but before we open it up to the audience for Q&A, Rachel, just tell us one more time uh, what Woken does in case anyone wants more assistance. Yes. So we offer career coaching. We also have a software platform. But essentially, we are helping professionals at all different stages, all different types of roles and industries, all different types of goals and challenges. We want to make sure you feel informed and supported with every single step that you take. So whether you're clarifying your direction, upskilling, improving your branding, job searching, networking, interviewing, advancement, promotion, you name it. We're making sure that you have a co-pilot uh, with all of this stuff, right? These are big things. These are important things. Um, you care a lot about it, and we care a lot about it. So we're, we're simply here to, to make sure you have the support you need with all these. There's so much to navigate with careers. So we're here to uh, support you through all of those things. Love it. Okay, so now we're opening up, up to the audience for Q&A. Just a reminder, you can do this in two ways. The first way is um, to request to join the stage. You should see a little 
button in, in the bottom right corner, um, but please make sure your microphone is on so that way we can hear you when you ask your questions. Um, and the second way is to anonymously DM Rachel. Um, we'll make sure we'll keep your name out of the sentences and you can still get your answer um, that way. So yes, take a minute if you need to think of your questions, but we are here. Yeah, feel free to raise your hand, feel free to DM us. Um, we can, of course, keep riffing in the meantime, but please, at any point, raise your hand if there's anything we can help you with career-wise. Um, in the meantime, uh, Sam, do we want to kind of look at some other helpful topics while we wait? Yeah, sure, um, but I actually just got a DM, so let's first answer uh, this person's question. But uh, in the future, please remember to DM Rachel directly. Okay, so this person says, I lost my job and feel humiliated. Some people also gave me the quote, quote, look. How can I handle this hard time when networking? Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. Whenever you leave a job, I like to make sure you take a few days. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it's a day. It just depends to actually process. Because it can be scarring. It could be traumatic. It could be any number of feelings. It's like a breakup. Um, and so you can take it seriously and give yourself truly time to heal. I realize sometimes we need to move quickly in terms of, you know, finding the next thing, but it's, you know, to your point, it's going to creep up into your job search. If you're still feeling like sort of this negative emotion towards your past, you know, uh, experience. And so take some time to journal and like do some written processing or even out loud with a coach, mentor, peer, and just really review with yourself or with others like what went well what didn't go well what was in your control what was out of your control how do you make sense of it how do you process it how do you accept it and how do you tell yourself you know some some things that can help you be constructive for moving forward you know maybe there's some things you want to take forward there's some things you want to do differently in your next role there's some things you want to look you know for that are the same some things that you want to optimize for so how can you learn from this and really take it forward in a way that's constructive for yourself um, that's kind of a, a quick way that I would try to think about it. And then of course, revisiting, what am I excited to pursue, you know, as the next step in my career and make sure that you're excited and ready and feeling good about what's next for you and what's that it's a window of opportunity. So really seeing it as, you know, that, that open chance where you can grow and you can take it to the next level and you can get involved with new and different things and, you know, really knowing where you want to go next and using the networking to really learn from other people, explore your interests. There's so much good that can come from the next chapter, but truly taking the time to process, you know, you have to face your uncomfortable feelings and just remember that, like, you're going to be safe. If you explore difficult, uncomfortable feelings, the worst case scenario is that you feel a little uncomfortable. You're still safe. And it's going to be worth it to like sort of force yourself to like be in those feelings. Sometimes I'll tell people, go to a coffee shop, leave your phone at home, take a notebook and a pen and just like literally feel the feels um, and just work through it because it can be difficult the way you leave a company. So try to process, try to work through and try to figure out, you know, how you can uh, move forward and, and explore this next chapter from a more ready mindset but you got to kind of take that time to really work through your feelings to be to be honest with you um i did see a hand so sorry please uh keep your hand up and we're happy to get to you um i don't know if that the hand just goes away um or if you need to raise it one more time but please uh do let us know and uh we'll, we'll take the next question and i do see some potential dms coming in so please feel free to message me um, and again, I think we had a hand, but yeah, I see the hand up. Um, I think oh. I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, Jibin, I will invite you as a speaker right now. Ah, okay. It went to the bottom of the screen by accident somehow. There we go. Beautiful. Hello. Hey. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to piggyback off the last question because I was laid off in February, but I got, I ha since then I've got two jobs, but the problem is I'm moving to Florida in a month so like I need a whole new network again so it's just like that's that's my dilemma of the day that I'm sharing okay just so building a new network yeah, so. pretty much yeah yeah well so when you're networking right I think a lot of people like assume like oh I don't have the network I need but you want to be really creative so the first thing when you're building a network is think about your 
sort of personal network, and we're we're often assuming that we know who people know. So whether it's friends, family, acquaintances, a neighbor, a past colleague, you can say to them, you know, I'm looking to learn from people who are in ABC types of roles and ABC types of companies. Um, do you happen to know anyone? So be unassuming of your network's network. That's number one. Number two, for anyone who did an undergraduate degree, the LinkedIn alumni page is so great. So any university has an alumni page on LinkedIn. That's an amazing, powerful way to have a warm connection and a really large pool of people um, that you can really search certain locations, companies, you know, and you can say, oh, I see we're both alumni of whatever university and you have something in common. So see what you can do that way. And, you know, LinkedIn is also such an amazing research tool in terms of like, say you search for something, you could see, oh, I know someone and they know this person, right? So if you're searching for a target role, target company, you are going to see those mutual connections. And then, of course, worst case scenario, cold outreach, obviously, it's not your number one thing. But if you do see someone that you really want to meet, make your outreach message all about learning. Don't make it about jobs. And just say, you know, I really enjoy looking at your profile. I'd love to learn about A, B, and C from you. Would you, you know, be open to hopping on a 15-minute informational chat? And really just mention to them, what are the topics you'd want to learn about? Show that you've done a little bit of your homework and you know how they can help you and you have some topics on your mind. Um, so building new relationships that way. I mean, I also love, you know, groups and communities. There's so many groups and meetups and associations and memberships and whether it's digital, whether it's in person, whether you look for groups that relate to target roles, target industries, or even your demographics, whether it's local or just anything about you as a person, there's so many ways to find communities of who may relate to you or even just career professional networking communities. Um, there's so many meetups usually in, in, in many major cities where it's kind of like, just any professional networking meetup and you meet random people, you never know who you're going to meet. So there's just so many ways to, to build that network and go about it. Um, I'm probably missing things, but you know, you just want to be open-minded. You want to be creative. You want to be scrappy. You want to find new things, find new groups, find new people, find new resources, and just keep trying, you know, one new thing and expanding. And once you have one networking call, ideally they introduce you to another person, right? So like, could it be a natural spiral effect when you have a great conversation? You know, if you're authentic with your conversation, they're going to know who they want to introduce you to based on your skills, your interests, and their network, right? So that should also sort of uh, snowball in itself. So there's a lot of ways, you know, you can you can do it. Um, LinkedIn is such a powerful research tool. Um, but yeah, you, you got to just be a little creative with it, right? I hope that helps. Um, I am going to look at my DMs here. Um, so Most we've got a question. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we've got a question here that says, in the job search, uh, in database management or other fields, why do employers ask you to complete a skills test? What is the purpose if your credentials and work history can be verified? You know what? It's a great question. Like, I think we could question a lot of hiring practices that come from employers, but unfortunately, we have to navigate the system as it is. We can't tell them not to do a skills test. So. Could we try to understand it? Sure. Why do we think they do a skills test? To try to get to know your skills. Does it make perfect sense, all the things that they do to try to get to know candidates? Probably not. There's a lot of things that employers don't do, or sorry, that they do that doesn't make perfect sense. A lot of people don't know how to hire well, but you have to navigate the system. So for example, say you do a skills test and you're not passing it, like can you do some networking uh, you know, where you get your foot in the door and they get to know you by way of conversation so that your skills test is irrelevant, right? Let them get to know you, build a relationship, make sure that human effort uh, leads uh, above anything else, right? Um, and then the message says, you, uh, people I speak to say employers want people back in the office. If you see a posting you like, how do you go about asking if they're open to a remote work? Um, Again, networking, you want to understand what the company is doing from the inside and really understand their policies or the changes. Sometimes there's variances in remote policies per team, per manager, per location. There's so many different, you know, things that could change. You could have a different CEO that comes on board and all of a sudden it's a new policy. So there's a lot that could change, but usually in the interview process or in the networking process, you can understand what's going on with the remote work at that company. So I hope that helps answer your question. Um, I do see another question that I will read aloud, and of course, feel free to raise your hand uh, if there's more questions. Um, how to make 
people accept me to talk with me when I don't have a job, find that people would not accept me when they hear I don't have a job. So yeah, if you're networking, right, you want to make sure that your outreach is all about learning. So if you're asking for a job in your message, it's a little uncomfortable because they don't know if they can help you. So if you're reaching out, you want to make it like, what can they do? They can give you information. They can give you perspective. They can share their knowledge. They can share information, things like that. So whenever you're doing networking outreach, you want to say, you know, you want to basically say uh, what it is you hope to learn from that person. That's something that always is feasible and valuable for both parties uh, and, and gets the foot in the door. And then at the end of the call, of course, you can see if there's maybe opportunities uh, that you can uncover. So that's kind of how I would make sure that people, you know, are looking. There's really three rules of thumb if you're trying to increase response rates from networking, which is how warm are the connections, right? Is it totally strangers or do you have an introduction or do you know this person somehow? Um, where are you reaching out? Is it email or is it LinkedIn DMs? Email is usually preferable. And then uh, what's your phrasing, right? So if you're talking about learning or if you're talking all about jobs, you know, what, what, what can they resonate? You know, really read that message before you send it and imagine you're the person receiving it, right? Uh, what would be something that's feasible for them to really respond to um, if that makes sense, right? Um, any other questions from the audience that we can answer? Yep, just uh, feel free to either, you know, DM Rachel or you can uh, request to be a speaker. Um, we really hope that this is helping you guys. Cool. Um, we can keep going. But feel free to raise your hand or DM us at any point if there's any questions. You know, there's so much that goes into careers. Again, there's the mindset, there's accountability, staying on track, and of course, all the practical efforts to help you achieve your goal. Um, so if there's any questions we can answer, we still have a few minutes, happy to help, or we can keep going in the meantime. Uh, Sam, let me know if there's a question you wanna pick at from uh, our list uh, while we wait for audience questions. Yeah, I think uh, this first one really resonates with me. So people focus on deciding a long-term career path. So why is that limiting and how do you reframe it? Yeah, if you're trying to figure out your direction, right? I think a lot of people feel, um, you know, like they need to figure out the big picture path. I like to basically say, what would be the next role that feels great fit for you like right now? And then you still want to understand where that role could lead you in the future. Um, but sometimes if you pick a goal that's way too far out or like far down the line, you could change, the role's going to change, the industry's going to change. And so I'd like to say, you know, what would be an exciting, amazing fit for you sort of right now? Um, and then see where that could lead you. And that way it evolves in a more organic way. Um, but yeah, I like to really reframe it on the now because it usually sort of ends up in a more exciting path. And there's that healthy amount of like, you're still informed, but that healthy level of unpredictability that you kind of want, right? Like if you're an amazing team in an amazing team right now, or in an amazing role, you don't know what that's going to open you up to, right? As a secondary step. So that's kind of, you know, what I'd, what I'd want someone to be thinking about. Um, I do see a DM, any advice for a senior leadership role? Um, I see your message, but please let me know if you want to clarify what exactly, um, what angle uh, you're looking to get some help with. Because senior leaders, that could look a lot of ways. It could mean a lot of things, depending on what you're sort of struggling with or what you're working on or what you hope to improve. So let me know if you kind of want to specify a little bit more from the senior leadership perspective of what would be helpful. Uh, there's so much to talk about with leadership, uh, but it just really depends. Um, yep, I, I see your role title. Thank you for that. Uh, but definitely let me know exactly what you feel like you need help with uh, specifically as a leader. Uh, would want to make sure I'm answering the right question. So I'll pay attention to the DMs. Uh, and if anyone else has questions in the meantime, please feel free to let us know. We do have a few minutes. I'm happy to answer anything. Uh, oh, okay. I do have a message. Let me take a look at it. Um, that you heard somebody say you need to figure out where you want to be in terms of company to retire from. In this climate, people change jobs all the time. What advice do you have on how to plan for retirement if people aren't staying at a particular job? Is this an old school way of thinking? That's a great question. Um, look, I agree that it's a little impossible. Like, well, first of all, it depends on your stage. 
if you are young and early in your career, I don't think you need to ask yourself, where am I going to retire? If you're getting closer to that time frame in your life, sure, you can absolutely think about it. But it, to be honest, it really depends on the person. It depends on how long you want to work, and it depends on how far away from that you really are. So I think you know, when you're five years away from it, you can start to really focus on that question. Um, but to your, to your point, things change so fast that you, you almost can't plan too, too far in advance, right? Um, I do see a question, creating a robust pipeline of opportunities. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, uh, with job search, if you're more senior, um, it is sometimes slightly more narrow in terms of like how many opportunities may exist at a more senior level. Um, but again, I say slightly because I still wouldn't just like assume right off the bat that you it's impossible or that you can't find that level of opportunity. I think you just need to get creative with who are you networking with and do you really understand the roles and the companies and the industries and you know getting your foot in the door, still meeting with people at or around your level. Um, to, to network with people. I mean, you can do networking in the same way, even if it's a more senior level. So, you know, instead of seeing that, oh, it may be a limited opportunity, I'd rather just say, all right, where can I find more of what I think I want, right? Like, it is true at a more senior level, maybe there's a little bit potentially takes more time, a little bit harder to find more senior roles. Um, but I would rather look at it from a positive lens of like, all right, who can I meet with, right? What companies do make sense for me? How do I build those right relationships, right? And just start with that. You don't need to jump the gun assuming like it may be hard. Let's just look at like what can we do and, and go from there, you know? Uh, always start with what's feasible, right? Um, but yeah, we're, we're sort of at that ending mark here. So I will just quickly mention where you can find me um, and so, yeah, on LinkedIn, that's kind of my big place. I always post on there. Um, so please connect with me on LinkedIn, Rachel Surwitz. Um, of course, we have accounts on all different social media platforms. We are usually either Woken or Get Woken on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok. And then our website is IamWoken.com. We always offer a free initial call if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one support. And we've got a series of these talks on Fishbowl. So every two weeks we'll be here exploring different career topics. Um, and please reach out if there's more you want to hear, if there's something specific you want to hear, let us know. We're, we're, we're here to help and we want to uh, really help with all and any burning career uh, goals and challenges. We're here for you. So uh, please uh, follow us, stay in touch, join us in the next time. Uh, reach out, would love to, you know, email me. You can find me wherever you need to find me and, and reach out and, and I'd be happy to help you. So we'll see yep. you again soon. Yeah, uh, our next uh, event is on October 3rd, and we're going to be covering career path exploration. Uh, so if you don't know what career you want or even how to go about that process, make sure to tune in. Um, and yeah, and you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well by searching Samantha Legere. But thank you all for joining. We hope this helped. Um, and I hope you guys have a, a good rest of your day. Bye, guys. Bye.